that is a beautiful Corvette. Jay Leno, in the house, How baby! You guys? How you guys? Come on down. All right. Now, everybody knows the Jenners. Kendall is a 20-year-old supermodel. And Caitlin is a lot of things. Someone I've known for over 30 years. An Olympic gold medalist, race car driver, TV personality, the world's most famous transgendered woman. But today, she's just a proud parent of a kid who has a classic car. You know, that's actually the first year Corvette got real serious about building a sports car. Kendall loves driving it. Now, does yeah. it attract any attention? So much. I get, <laughs> I get a lot of attention from old men. Yeah. Um, oh, really? I'm shocked. I'm shocked. No, they that, I'm shocked that they, creepy no, old guys would be attracted Jay? to a young yeah, attractive a Corvette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a Jay. No, but it's so funny because they'll pull up and they'll be like, such a nice car. It's your dad's, right? And I'm like, no, it's mine. Yeah. Oh, is that what exactly. they say? It's yeah, your dad's? they're like, I'm sure it's your dad's car. And I'm well, like, sure. no, it's actually my car. Well, yeah, how many people that young can yeah. have a classic car like that? Yeah. And, and you know, bought it with your money, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she's like top fashion model in the world. Oh, yeah, that little right. girl. Thank you. This woman has style. <laughs> and I brought her up well. Yeah, it's all you. It's yeah. what? Yeah, and then I, and I you, and you don't think, this. and her modesty comes from you as yes, well. It does. That's it's exactly right. So how does a girl like Kendall turn into a car lover? Well, probably from growing up with Caitlin, who's been a race car driver and one of the most competitive people I've ever known. You've had a lot of racing experience, right? You did Actually, Daytona I did. and Sebring, was it? Um, had the lead at Daytona for 23 and a half hours and wow. then lost it in the last half hour. That last half hour, you just the tough off one, here. yes. I actually had a race two weeks ago down at Circuit of the Americas. My son, Bert, he races uh, in Robbie Gordon's. My son won the first race. Right. I took third. And then the second race, uh, he took second and I took third. Oh, OK. Well, that's, yeah. that's pretty good. Well, I told him, I said, Bert, don't get too excited. Right behind you was a 66-year-old trans woman. Right, right. You know, so don't don't get too excited yeah. about this, OK? Will you be in the Trans Am series? Yeah, with yeah. the Trans Am yeah, series. Yeah, I should that, do yeah, Trans yeah, Am. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody thinks that you're, oh, I'm so competitive. But I'm really not. I do it because I enjoy it. Yeah. It, it's, an, it's an art form. Yeah. I mean, I see, like, the Scott Pruitts of the world. Yeah. who I can get in this car, and I guarantee you there's nothing left in this car. Right. I got everything out of this car you can get on this lap. He jumps in the same car, goes out, and goes a second and a half quicker. Yeah. I go, where did that come from? Yeah. Where was that second and a half? And he did it every time. You see, you are competitive. You're all pissed off because he's a second and a half ahead of him. See, if you, did, if you didn't care, you would go, oh, well, a second and a half, what's that, really? What's that in But mind? now, but look, what's... it's bugging you. It's driving you crazy. Today. No, no, because you have the killer instinct. You're still pissed yeah. off no, that just... 32 years ago, this guy beat you by a second and a half, yeah, whatever it might be. Well, let's go for a ride. Right, Come let's on. do it. Take it. All right. All right. Shouldn't I be concerned, my daughter leaving with an older man? <laughs> well, the nice thing is they don't get much older. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Dad. Yeah, goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah. Did you leave the keys in this one? <laughs> so was this the first really old car you ever drove? Yes. Oh, OK. Yeah, there's just things to it that you kind of got to get used to. Like, if right. you drive in this thing all day, you smell like a car. That's funny. I also like love that I could say that I could drive this car a stick not many, shape not many, uh, people my age. People your age no. can even drive a stick. My friends are like all very impressed by it. They like, I don't yeah. think anyone believes it till they actually see yeah. it. Have you let any of your friends drive it? Never. Excellent. I would never let them Excellent. touch it. Excellent. True car girl. Never give it to a valet. <laughs> no. And don't let your idiot friends drive it. Yeah. Could you not wait to get your license? Oh my god, no, I was so excited. Yeah. I couldn't wait. And I remember I failed my driving test the first time. Really? What part did you fail? I went into the turning lane and didn't put my blinker on. The test lady gave me a second chance without telling me, and I right. did it again and oh. didn't put my blinker on. Oh boy. And so she failed me. And I was so devastated. I was sobbing, crying. How long did you have to wait till you took it again? I think like two weeks or something. Oh, okay. But that seemed like a lifetime. That's hilarious. Are you impressed by a guy's car? Um, if they have a classic car, yes. Yeah. Oh, it's more classic. So guys with classic cars are better than yeah. guys with fancy Lamborghinis and Ferraris. Yeah, and well, I'm surrounded by guys like that. You know what I mean? You're, to me, you're... it's so much cooler to have a classic car. Yeah, very good. I so think you're... in general, it's cooler to have a classic car, anyone. You're giving hope to a lot of dorky guys that spend <laughs> their whole life restoring a car. Thanks for being a, uh, a good car girl. Thanks. Cool. <laughs>
excited. I can't believe this is my first time on a racetrack. Well, see, first time for everything. <laughs> Well, I know this is your day off. I know you're right in the middle of the tour. So how's the tour going? Oh, good? The tour is going great. It's been five years since I've been on tour. Now, Head Above Water is a new album. Tell me about the title. Why? What, what does that refer to? What's the first single off the record? OK. It was a song that I wrote about my, my health journey. Yeah, that's right. You had that Lyme disease deal. Yeah, so I fought that for a couple of years. Wow. I'm happy to be driving. I'm happy to be on tour and yeah. living life. Well, you started at 15, right? Yeah, my first album came out when I was 17. Complicated and Skater Boy. And what year were you first on The Tonight Show with me? Do you remember? I would have been 17. Right, right. So you want to get your speed up and then break right before the turn and then power through the turn. Go right into that corner right there. Right there, tight as you can. Try to get near that white line. Ooh, you kind of go wide. Yeah. That's it. There you go. Doing good. The idea is to always kind of keep the car going straight, even when you're going around a curb. Cut the wheel. Now get on the gas. There you go. There you go. I feel like I'm in a video game right now. Yeah, well, it is like a video <laughs> game, yeah. yeah. There you go. Now you're doing good. Give a little more gas. Give a little more gas. So in Canada, you just say, give her. Give her, eh? Give her, eh? <laughs> Now go this way, step on the brake, and then cut the wheel way over there. Oh, this is easy. Well, yeah, that's because we're not going that fast. But oh, okay, yeah, we're going imagine 30. Imagine you go 100, and it gets a little crazy. Give her it. Don't be afraid of it, Lassie. <laughs> there you go. All right, pick it up some speed. Yeah. There we go. Let's see if she gets it over 100 miles an hour. Are you ready to go? Oh, my gosh. Okay, you're going to put your foot right to the floor, OK? All the way to the floor. Keep going, keep going, that's it. You're doing good. Oh, you're just fast. Oh, my God. There you go. 100 miles an hour, that's good. <laughs> it's so fun. Want me to take you around for a lap? Absolutely. All right, we'll switch off. It's not every day you get to go on a racetrack with Jay Leno. Or Avril Lavigne. shows you what a good car this is. Wow. How you doing there? You okay? I'm holding down my lunch. <laughs> Today I'm going to raise my buddy Wanda Sykes. There she is. Wanda, welcome to California. What the hell is this, Jay? It's a beautiful California day. I thought you and I would race each other in these matching Vipers. I'm not racing you in a Viper. What the hell? Vipers, no one, no one has these, Jay. There's probably two in the world, and you have both of them. No. I mean, I'll race you, but like a, a real world car, cars that people drive, cars that I drive, like a minivan. Minivan? A Viper against a minivan? No, minivan against minivan. Yeah. All right, a race to the race. Let's do it. All right. You dummies ain't buckled up. See, I bet you that Leno, he's not going to do this. Y'all probably need crash helmets riding with Jay. OK. Here we go. Nice and easy, huh? Apparently, she shops for World War II rations. So how was soccer practice? Mm -hmm. Come on, pick up the pace. Uh-oh, uh-oh. It's OK. That's OK. Wasn't much. Looks like she's looking for a parking space. I do not speed. I'm a black woman. Speeding is not my thing. And we are done. Look at that. It's all good. Now let's see how Leno does. Oh, I should win this easy. Ready? Get set, go. Oh, Lord. Oh, what is he doing? Kids, all right? <laughs> He's on flipping. That idiot, what is he doing? 
This is how you drive a minivan. <laughs> okay, now he's just running over coal. He got like six coals underneath the car. <laughs> oh my god. Oh man, y'all gonna have to get that car detailed. Good three. <laughs> this egg dripping out of the car. <laughs> I think I won that race. Oh, that was fast. You you, you ready to make some omelets? Thank All right, so so an egg look. broke. It's not the end of the world. Okay, let, let's let's see what's going on back here. <laughs> Jay, this, Jay, you killed the kids. What are you talking about? The, the kids are dead, Jay. You, did your father put the seatbelt on the kids? You didn't say anything about putting seatbelts on. You just do. That's you know just something, something you know. No. Oh my God, my poor baby. Look, somebody lost the arm. The girl lost the arm, Jay. This is not supposed to happen. Look at this. This is a mess. All right, let's see the final tally. Wanda's time was four minutes fifty-three seconds with ten broken eggs. At a one-second penalty apiece, that gives her a final time of five minutes and three seconds. My initial time was one minute, 49 seconds. It was uh, 400 broken eggs. Oh, some kind of special 10 second loss limb penalty. Where'd that come from? I haven't even heard of that. And a final time of... Really? 8.39? We'll call it a draw. No, we'll call it a win for me. This is a win for me. Big win. Loser. Loser. Egg smasher. Dummy killer. Winner. <laughs> so good. So good. So tell me why this was your dream car. Well, I was always a little gearhead. So when the Mustang came out, just the look of it, the sleekness of it, the style of it. I mean, look right. at this car. It's gorgeous. And then you turn that engine over, and man, that sound, it never gets old. So did you always work on cars when you were a kid? My brother started working on cars. My right. brother was seven years older than me. Yeah. So he started working on cars. So I was fascinated by it. He also drove a motorcycle, and I was fascinated right. by that. I mean, that's why I'm, I'm always surprised that my parents didn't know I was a lesbian until I told them. Oh. You would think, you would know when you see me out there covered in grease working on cars with my well, brother. Well, I mean, was there a big thing to try and get you to you know, wear the crinoline dresses and do the other thing. Oh, and, heck yeah. And stop playing with those cars. Stop and all. that. Yeah, I mean, we were Italian Catholics, so they always wanted me to wear the dress. Easter was horrifying for me because I loved the chocolate, but I knew I had to wear that dress. Right, right, you know? yeah, yeah. And what's the fastest car you've ever been in? I had the 1993 Mustang when it first came out, oh, okay. the one with the five liter engine. And the thing about it was it was so smooth and because of the hydraulic clutch, you couldn't even tell how fast you were going. Yeah, you're not talking to a cop now. <laughs> Well, I love that you drive a stick. That's the first sign. Well, you know, in show business, I've had to, like, in different movies, I've driven almost everything. Really? Yeah. I've driven a bus. I've driven a plane. I've driven a boat. I guess the cars came before the show business then, right? Yeah, cars came before the show business. In fact, I taught a basic auto mechanics class on Saturday mornings. I was working at a gas station at the time. I was also uh, a construction worker. Right. I also refurnished. Um, Furniture. So you could have been a one-person village people. I could. I mean, you, so you, you were a, co a policeman, mechanic. You could. You, you, Except you, for the Native American. Yeah, I could have done all. I think it's safe to say you had an unconventional career, correct? Yeah, crazy career. And that's kind of what this show is about. Unconventional. And this is kind of a conventional Mustang. Oh. Well, it is. So I. I mean, yeah. You know something? I, I have another Mustang. I think this car suits you better. It's more. Is there a bar in the car? No, there's no bar in the car, but it's raised the bar. <laughs> I guess you can. Okay. Say. Here we go.
exploring the east side of Detroit with Motown legend Martha Reeves in a car I picked out just for her. So when was the last time you rode in a 65 Mustang? Do you a know, while? I have never ridden in a Mustang. Wait, you've never ridden in a Mustang? No, this is my first time. My first Mustang ride. So tell me about the early days. You grew up here. Did you knock on Barry Gordy's door? Did he discover you? Well, you know, we used to have amateur shows all the time in the different theaters, and I won an amateur contest. Oh, OK. Yeah. And the hits followed. But while Martha's career was flourishing, jobs were moving out to the suburbs and social unrest was growing. Now, I remember a story. Were you on stage once when the riots broke out? Did that, have I got that right? Right at this wonderful theater right here, the Fox Theater. Right. I was getting ready to sing, and somebody beckoned me to the edge of the stage. And I thought something was wrong with my dress. I'd put on the wrong shoes or something. But I could hear sirens. And they said, to Martha, you've got to tell everybody to walk out of here calmly. There's a riot that's broken out. We've got a curfew. Everybody has to be home by 9. And the armed guards are in the street. In July of 1967, economic pressures, the summer heat, and long-running tensions between African-American residents and the police erupted in five days of violent riots. I imagine you've seen the city change quite a bit since you were making the hits here, huh? Oh, yeah. Because of the riots, a lot of things changed. People moved, and people went out of business, yes, and decided they'd take their business to the suburbs. Give you some perspective just how massive the exodus from Detroit was. Between 1950 and 2010, the city lost about 1.1 million residents. That's more people than are in San Jose, California, the ninth largest city in the U.S. They left behind tens of thousands of abandoned buildings, and the effects were devastating. So what made you stay after so many folks left? Our job was to be an example. You get over a crisis and you continue your life. Yeah. You can't run from reality. But there were those, like Martha, who stuck it out and helped turn things around. Is this Heidelberg over here? Yes. We're entering Heidelberg. Whoa. <laughs> that is so clever. There's Tyree. Heidelberg, yeah, come on. Show. Uh, <laughs> All right. Jay, have you ever been on television? Uh, this is a first for me. <laughs> yeah. Martha, you ever been on television? No, no. Heidelberg television. No, this is yeah. a first. You know, this is really a big screen. This is uh, <laughs> this high def stuff is unbelievable. <laughs> it likes the hands coming right at you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Come right at you. Let me turn the set off. Yeah, turn it off. Let's see, where if you can type, you can drive. That's pretty That's much what right. it is here. You, we started, and it's in park. Push button transmission. OK, I put it in neutral, and then I go to D. And look at that, the age we live in. We're moving. So tell me, how did you discover this place? Had you heard about it for years? Was it? Oh, no, I, I had no idea it existed until one year, about 20 years ago. I came up for a weekend to visit some friends, and. They said, you want to see the most beautiful house in Maine? And of course, I'm a house buff, so. Right. And uh, at the end of a five-hour cocktail tour, <laughs> I bought the house. Oh, that's great. Now, was it for sale at that time? It was, oh. but they were being very selective right. about who they sold it to. They wanted somebody who would take care of it. Right. So right. I'm really the caretaker of an historic property. Well, you've done a wonderful job. It's just yeah. beautiful. And you know what's nice is it's extremely quiet here. Yeah. Now, was your first experience in a car? Um, partially. Partially? <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's usually the answer. You know, that was, you, you went to outdoor movies, right. and, what, and what kind of car was it, do you remember? Uh, the outdoor movie car? That was a Ford station wagon, a Ford I State? recall. Oh, wow, with the seat that flipped down? But I was down? in the front seat, because oh. my boyfriend was the driver, and the oh. other couple was in the back seat. Oh, OK. And uh, the other couple did more than we did. Oh, that's yes. Yeah, so you were the good girl. <laughs> Well, I like to watch the movies. Right, right. That's right. It was shocking what was going on in the back seat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, you and I have something in common. We both like to work, and you work really hard running the company, doing the show. 
Where does that come from? Are, are you the most driven person in your family, or, or did you pick um, it up from well, parents I'm, or brothers? Well, I'm the or? most curious, I think, of person in the family. Yeah. And I think that curiosity kind of drives me to try many things, and that's where I get my entrepreneurial vision from. And if you're an entrepreneur, you work hard because you're always trying to build something um, out of just an idea. What I found was like even my lawyer, when we were going public, he just didn't believe in me. Now, do you think that because you're a woman or just because yeah, it was you as a no, person? No, no, it was a woman. Yeah. He didn't believe that I could take a company that's based on lifestyle right. to the public markets. And I did it extremely successfully. Right. And he sent me an orchid. <laughs> he said, I am now a believer. And it's still like that. There's still a prejudice against women. Sure. I, I do not consider myself um, a, you know, rabid feminist. But I'm a hardworking woman, and right. I know how to make a success out of things. And I try to encourage other women to feel good about what they're doing. Right. Let me ask you this. There was the Eddie Bauer edition of the Ford Explorer. Yes. There was the Bill Bloss Lincoln. Would you ever want to do a Martha Stewart yes. edition of a car? Yes. Okay. I would love to do my own edition of the car. I have good, practical solutions. Yeah. And I just, I know that they would work. Plus the colors. I tell you what, I am going to call some car companies. We are going to get that Martha Stewart edition out. Excellent. There you go. Martha, right. thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, Jane. All it was right. very fun to spend the afternoon with you. Yeah. In an Edsel. In an Edsel. Yes. Woohoo. So, uh, when do I get to drive this baby? See, it was my car, I would say, no problem. Ah, maybe you could talk to him. OK, well, let's go see the owner and see if he'll let me uh, have a little whiz in it. No, I don't want you to take a whiz in it, because that would be a bit of a problem. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. See you in a minute. All right. Hello, Mrs. Bond. It's Miss Bond. <sighs> Whatever. So, I hear there's a key to a car. The <laughs> Aston Martin. Can I drive it? A woman driving an Aston Martin? Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> Where are you going? I'm not going anywhere. So, can I get the keys? No. Give me the keys. No. Give me the keys! <laughs> Run, pussy! Give me the keys! Hey! How was he? He was on the fence, but he gave me my own key. Good enough for me. Let's go. Drive, that's what they say. Well, let's do it. <laughs> Punch it! Yeah! <laughs> I don't know about you, but I think she likes it. I need to show her the machine guns here. This is beautiful. This is a car that speaks of your place in the industry. Ah, oh, thank you. You see, you're a big star. You should have a big car. And they don't come much bigger than this. It's gorgeous. Three tons of fun. Let's do it. Yeah. Hop in. All right. This car seats seven for dinner. For dinner? For dinner. Oh, oh. Comfortable back down? Yes, sir, I am. Woo! So growing up, what was the family car? Was there a car? We didn't have a family car. <laughs> didn't have a family car? How'd you get around? No. We got around with public transportation. Oh, riding the bus? We took the bus and had the train. <laughs> Main Street, <laughs> Chestnut Street. I hate that sound. So that really inspired me to work my butt off because I always wanted a car. And what was your first car? My first, 
My first car was a BMW. A BMW? Yes. I thought you were going to say like a 78 Chevy. It was a BMW. I wanted to be like, um, I think it was Kelly or Donna from 90210. Yeah, that's funny. What was the first car that impressed you? Were you going, oh my God. Oh, it was a Range Rover. Oh, Range Rover. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I just thought it looked like such a cool car. It looked like luxury and it looked yeah. like sporty at the same time. Now, you're a car girl. I know you yes. got, got the Jag F-Type. That's a really fast car. Oh, my God. I can tell you, like, some of the most amazing moments of me driving was definitely in that car. Did you have any tickets? I got one ticket in that car. How fast are you going? About 120. 120? Yeah. And what happened? Um, I got a warning. You got a warning. I got a warning. A warning at 120. <laughs> Did you use the car as sort of a rolling studio? When you're writing and composing, would you do it in the car or would you just strictly do it in the studio? No, no, no. I do it in the car too. I feel like I got some really good ideas or yeah. like it was always something going on on the street. I just always felt like I could listen to it and catch a vibe in there, write in there. I think it's the best way to listen to music. Does this have air conditioning? No, no worries. Air conditioning wasn't invented until about 1940. No radio. This car is so big they just bring in live acts. <laughs> so you don't you don't have to have a radio. I love the sound of the horn. There you go. Driving this road. <laughs> Thank you, kind sir. Thank you. Thanks for being a car girl. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like the look. Everybody always pulls up. Men will pull up, like especially guys, and they'll, they'll be like, "Oh my god, cool car!" See, Does men that pull have up a... next to a blonde and say things. That's unusual. Yeah. How unusual no, but it's always it? about the car. It's really? never yeah. about me. Really? Yes. It'll say something, and I'm like, I only know the engine. That's all I know. Right, right. I was like, it was just and a car. You know cute the engine? Car. What engine is this? Coyote 5.0. Oh, that's very good. Yeah. That's very good. What was your first car? Uh, my first car I ever bought myself on credit. Um, was, you bought it on credit? Was, well, I didn't have anybody to co-sign. I didn't have anybody. So I was one of those kids that, you know, very stupidly was like, look what you can do with this thing. Um, but anyway, I bought a Ford Explorer Sport. Oh, OK. That was my first. Same kind of thing as a Bronco. Yeah, I like, a, I like an SUV, but I like the little cute ones. I have something I'm going to take you for. I'm going to let you drive it. OK. Have you, have you done much off-roading? I have off-roaded quite a bit in my teen years and 20s, yeah. but not really. I think once you become a mom, you become not cool, Jay. Um, and you just don't have time for things. Well, you know, I guess I, maybe there's something to that. So to Wait, me, what are we going to be driving? What You'll see. You'll okay. see. You ready? Yeah. OK. You trust me? It's not my truck. Huh. Go down here. Let's see how this thing really goes off the road. All right. This turn should be really fun, Jay. Very wow, this is pretty steep. I uh, know. On the very first thing, you're testing my skill. See a tremor in your future. See? I actually really like how this drives no. It does drive nice. So you got your four-wheel drive. So Get it. Here we go. I love four-wheel drive. I got this. Look at that. Look at that, huh? I'm a pro. Oh my god. I want to know what that underground tunnel thing was. We'll find out. Let's do this. Hey CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you'll find videos from all your favorite CNBC shows. Be sure to subscribe by clicking right here. Click on the videos around me and watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.